Hey, how's it going? And today we are going to create a block spawning functionality that could be used for a game or something in the style of Minecraft. This doesn't take very long to do. There's going to be two parts to this. There's this first part where we create the basic functionality and then another part which is more advanced on how we save it. So anyway, to get started on this, we need a block. So we're going to right click. We're going to go to blueprint class actor. We're going to call this BP underscore block. And then let's just double click on this and we'll go ahead and dock it. So it's separate and we're going to go ahead and add a static mesh. We need to make sure that it's set to movable and we just can go find any static mesh. We don't have to use a block, but we're going to use this cube one here. And you know, you can stylize these and make these different kinds of blocks and things like that. But that's all we're going to do for now. We also want to give the block the ability to destroy itself because we're going to call it to destroy itself. So we're going to create a custom event, go add custom event. And we'll call this destroy lock. And then we're going to just simply drag off up here and go destroy actor. And that's all we have to do on this. It references itself. So we'll call this from the first person blueprint. Now everything else we have left to do is just in the blueprint first person. So we're going to double click into here. This is all going to be based on a line trace function and also a spawn actor. So the line trace basically just shoots out a beam with four values, location and then magnitude. So anyway, to get started on this, we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to drive this off of a left click mouse. So we'll just left mouse button here, right there. And I'll zoom in here a little bit to see it a little bit better. And what we're going to do is we're going to drive this off of to the direction the camera is looking. So we'll get the first person camera. I'm going to go get world location of the camera in 3D space. And then we're going to get its magnitude is basically the direction it's actually looking. And this would be get forward vector right here. And then we just have to do some slight little adjustments here. So let's get the star of the show, which is the line trace. Line trace for objects here. And there's just a few things we got to do here. We can go ahead and plug this in here. The trace is going to start at the camera's world location. And to get the magnitude, we're going to have to add that. That's going to be the in location. It's going to be the world location plus this forward vector. So one thing we got to do is we're going to have to multiply this by a value. So we're going to type in multiply and it'll be a vector. And here we're going to right click and convert this to a this pin here. Convert that to a float value and then we can actually promote it to a variable and call it magnitude. And this will control how long our line trace shoots out. So if you find that you're not spawning out far enough, you can adjust this value. Let's compile and save that. We're going to get an error because it's not all set yet, but we're going to set it to a thousand over here, right there. We have to finish hooking up some things here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add these two values together. So we're going to drag off of here and go add and just plug this into here like that and plug this into the end over here. And then we have to tell it what type of objects to trace for. So we drag off of here and go make, whoop, drag off of here and go make array here. And here we can tell it to search for world static We'll set this to world dynamic and then physics body. So it'll trace to all of those types. And we don't, there's none that we need it to ignore for right now. And then all we have to do is we're almost done on this part of it. 
is we're going to create a branch node. So we're going to go B. And we just want to make sure that we're not spawning unless we're hitting something. So this is just setting a condition for that. So if we actually hit something, then we'll go ahead and spawn. And here we're going to drag off of here and break out, break the hit result. So when it hits something, you have all these values that you can pull off of it. And what we're going to need here is on the location, we just want to be able to snap this to the grid. So go vector snapped to grid and the grid size, we can set this to 100. And you'll see when we're testing this that it won't quite line up with the grid, but that's really not going to be a problem because we won't even see the grid in the final game. The grid lines are just there. And the last thing is spawn actor. So we're going to spawn actor from class. And let's zoom in here. We're going to set it to our BP block. The location is going to be what we've already determined. That just plugs right in there. And then this goes right in here like that. So now if I compile, so you can see if you look at this, there's really not that much to create the Minecraft functionality. So we compile and save and go in the first person. Let me come down here and I go play. You can see the blocks and don't, like I said, don't worry about them not aligning to this grid because the grid won't even be there. Because it's snapping at the origin, that's why it's doing that. So that's not a problem at all. And that takes care of that. Now we wanted the ability to right click and destroy them. So let's go back, let's hit escape and go back. Now the beauty here, we can actually just copy a lot of this, most of this. So let's just, let's just go ahead and copy all of all of this part here, let's see. We're not spawning, so we're gonna just go ahead and go Control C, come down here, click right around here, and Control V. And instead of this being the left mouse button, this is gonna be on the right mouse button. So go right mouse button, right here, and pop that into there like that. All we need to do, we're not going to be spawning in anything, so we can get, actually get rid of that. I didn't need to copy that. So this is all that we needed to copy, just this part. But we do need to make a call to our BP block. So what we're going to do is I'm going to right click and go cast to BP block right here. And cast won't work unless you've got an object identified here and the object is going to be whatever we hit so that goes in there and let me compile and save and now all we should have to do is call drag off of here and go call destroy block which is this thing right here that custom event we created so as far as I know, then that's everything. So if I compile and save, go into the first person, hit play. I'm walking around in here, if I click, I'm making blocks just like in Minecraft. And then if I right click, I'm destroying them. That easy. Now the only issue is, let's say I put some blocks down like this, right? And I escape and I come back in the game, well, that's not good. So, this reminds me a little of the matrix. So I'll put these blocks down, right? And then I escape and come back in. Well, what good is a block if it isn't saved? <laughs> I can show you how to make this block spawn a game, but if you can't save it, what good is it? not really good especially if you're creating something you're creating a world or something it's not any good at all so the most important thing is really 
the ability to save that. And in the next tutorial, I'll show how to do that. That's all I have for today. Take care. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.